Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and welcome the senior leadership of the U.S. Department of Justice. Good afternoon, and welcome to the 67th Annual Attorney General's Award Ceremony. For those who don't know me, I am Principal Deputy Associate Attorney General Clara McCusker-Murray. It is my great honor to serve as the MC for this important event. Today we gather to express our gratitude to an exceptional group of Department of Justice employees, and to recognize people from outside the department who put service before self to support our mission. The remarkable achievements that we celebrate today required a significant investment of talent, time, and hard work. Today is the day we recognize those achievements and say thank you. We are honored to be joined by many family members, friends, and colleagues of the award recipients. So much credit is due to you, the people who have supported our honorees throughout the, war throughout the years as they devoted time and effort to the department. We are so grateful for your support. We are also privileged to have with us today two special guests, Roz Baraka, Mayor of Newark, New Jersey, and Gary Barksdale, the Chief po Postal Inspector. At this time, I would ask that you please rise for the presentation of the colors by the Joint Armed Forces Color Guard of the Military District of Washington and the national anthem performed by the President's own United States Marine Band Brass Quintet.
Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in thanking uh, the Joint Armed Forces Color Guard and the United States Marine Band Brass Quintet. You may have noted, noticed that Attorney General Barr and I are accompanied on this grand stage by just a few of the department's senior leaders. Um, while other senior department officials join us in the audience. Um, the leaders on stage will assist the Attorney General in presenting awards to employees and their respective components. Um, and I invite each official on stage to stand when introduced. Um, for the sake of time, we'll ask you to just hold your applause until the end, until we've introduced everyone. Um, Brian Benchkowski, Assistant Attorney General for the Criminal Division. Stephen Boyd, Assistant Attorney General for the Office of Legislative Affairs. Jeffrey Bossert Clark, Assistant Attorney General for the Environment and Natural Resources Division. Macon Del Rahim, Assistant Attorney General for the Antitrust Division. Eric Dryband, Assistant Attorney General for the Civil Rights Division. Noel Francisco, Solicitor General. Michael Horowitz, Inspector General. Jody Hunt, Assistant Attorney General for the Civil Division. Lee Loftus, Assistant Attorney General for Administration, Justice Management Division, who will also serve as the narrator for today's ceremonies once we start presenting awards. James McHenry, Director, Executive Office for Immigration Review. Kathleen Hawk Sawyer, Director, Federal Bureau of Prisons. Donald W. Washington, Director, U.S. Marshal Service. Beth Williams, Assistant Attorney General, Office of Legal Policy. Christopher Ray, Director, Federal Bureau of Investigation. David Burns, Principal Deputy Assistant Attorney General, National Security Division. Utam Dillon, Acting Administrator, Drug Enforcement Administration. Corey Ellis, Acting Director, Executive Office for U.S. Attorneys. Regina Lombardo, Direct, Deputy Director, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. Bobak Talibian, Acting Director, Office of Information Policy. And Richard Zuckerman, Principal Deputy Assist Assistant Attorney General for the Tax Division. Please give these exceptional leaders and all of our components a big round of applause. We are also joined by several United States attorneys whose employees are being honored. It's my pleasure to introduce them now. Again, please hold your uh, applause until the end, just in the interest of time. Um, with us today are, and, and please stand when your name is called, uh, John Anderson, District of New Mexico. Michael Bailey, District of Arizona. Jeffrey Berman, Southern District of New York. Scott Brady, Western District of Pennsylvania. Robert Brewer, Southern District of California. 
Craig Carpenito, District of New Jersey. Aaron Neely Cox, Northern District of Texas. Rich Donahue, Eastern District of New York. Benjamin Glassman, Southern District of Ohio. Nick Hanna, Central District of California. Andrew Lelling, District of Massachusetts. Jesse Liu, District of Columbia. William McSwain, Eastern District of Pennsylvania. Ariana Fajardo Orshan, Southern District of Florida. Ronald Parsons, District of South Dakota. Zachary Terwilliger, Eastern District of Virginia. And David Wrigley, District of North Dakota. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our United States attorneys. Thank you. It is now my great privilege to introduce to you someone already known to many of you from the Wikipedia page, Other Notable Bagpipers, the Attorney General of the United States, the Honorable William P. Barr. Thank you, Claire. Good afternoon, honored guests, families and friends, and colleagues at the Department of Justice. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome all of you to the 67th Annual Attorney General's Award Ceremony. Uh, this is my fourth ceremony. I previously presided over two, and I was last a proud parent at one, and now I'm delighted to be part of this program. It's an opportunity for all of us to express our appreciation for the exemplary work done by so many at the Department of Justice and by our other partners in the law enforcement community. There is no more important institution in our country than the Department of Justice. The law is the foundation of our society. And we at the department are caretakers of the law. This is a solemn duty. By upholding the law, we make possible the common life of our nation and the freedom, equality, safety, and progress of our fellow citizens. I've long believed that there is no finer group than those who serve in the department. Our greatest strength in our fight for justice is our people the thousands of men, of men and women who have dedicated their careers, often at great personal sacrifice, to working for justice in America. I think all of us at the department feel privileged to work shoulder to shoulder with the colleagues that we have of such caliber and such commitment. Today's awardees are really, in a sense, the tip of the iceberg. Choosing them from such a large, talented, and successful pool of candidates was incredibly difficult. The nominees went through many levels of review before the final recommendations came to me. And this means that we're honoring the individuals today because, of their, because their work was truly exceptional, and they deserve our recognition and gratitude. At the same time, their work is also representative of the superb work done by their other colleagues at the department and elsewhere in law enforcement. And I know that every one of today's awardees would be the first to say that. And so this ceremony allows us all at the department to come together each year to recognize the outstanding achievements of our teammates. Their commitment and professionalism command our respect, our acknowledgement, and our gratitude. Today's awardees, to pick just a few examples, have dismantled violent street gangs, taken down a vast international sex trafficking ring, and prosecuted members of the heinous MS-13 gang. They have won the conviction of perhaps the world's most notorious drug kingpin, El Chapo. They have defended the nation against hostile foreign activities and have taken action to end fraud and abuse targeted at our senior citizens. They've taken down a hideous operation in Philadelphia that have preyed on mentally handicapped individuals for a decade. And through a cooperative effort with our state and local partners in Newark, New Jersey, they drove down violent crime by 
and Project Safe Neighborhood. As we reflect on the contributions of each of the 357 individuals we honor today, we should hold them up as examples of excellence that continue and inspire our own commitment and also as reminders of the professionalism and the qualities exhibited throughout the department. I mentioned the sacrifices of the honorees and their, colleague, and their colleagues, uh, a sacrifice that they re routinely make uh, in the performance of their duties. And I would be remiss if I didn't also mention the sacrifice of their families. The hardships you families endure, the long absences, the ever-present awareness of the risks that your loved ones undertake are testament to your own commitment to society where the law will be enforced and your commitment to your fellow citizens that will be protected. When we honor the awardees, we are also honoring you, their families. You deserve our respect and our thanks, and we applaud you. Can we please have applause for the families? <clears throat> to all my colleagues at the Department of Justice, let me say that it is a privilege to serve with you. I will do all I can to support your work in advancing the cause of justice. And to all the awardees, Congratulations and profound thanks. Thank you, Attorney General Barr. We will now begin the presentation of the awards. I welcome to the podium on my left, Lee Loftus. Lee will be kind of the Amy Poehler to my Tina Fey. Um, component heads and US attorneys on stage, when your employees' names are announced, please rise and join us center stage and remain for photographs. Um, during the award ceremony, a brief description of the recipient's accomplishments will be announced. You are invited to read more about the award recipients um, and their worthy efforts in your ceremony program. Again, please hold your applause until all of the recipients of group awards are announced. Our first category is the Distinguished Service Award. Um, the Attorney General's Distinguished Service Award is the second highest recognition bestowed by the Department of Justice. And I am pleased to announce that this year the award is presented to 151 individuals. Lee? Thank you, uh, Amy. I mean, Claire. So. Our first recipients of the Distinguished Service Award played a key role in targeting South Korean oil companies that rigged contract bids and defrauded the U.S. Department of Defense. Overall, these oil companies paid over $350 million in fines, penalties, and damages to the United States. The recipients are, from the Antitrust Division, Kevin Hart, Catherine Stella, Robert Lepore, Dick Doigish, John Holler, and Jonathan Silberman. From the Civil Division, Andrew Steinberg. From the U.S. Attorney's Office in the District of Alaska, Ryan Tanzi. From the District of Southern Ohio, Andrew Malik and Brenda Shoemaker. From the FBI, John Yu. And from the Defense Criminal Investigative Service, Hernando Arberlita. From the Air Force Office of Special Investigations, Mark Sackett and from the U.S. Army Criminal Investigation Command, David Lee. Receiving the award but not present today are Jeff Ahn and Ken Sakurber Ayashi. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the team.
Our next group is honored for successfully investigating and prosecuting a global price-fixing conspiracy to increase the prices of electrolytic capacitors. The team's tireless work over multiple years resulted in criminal charges and some of the highest fines in the antitrust division's history. The recipients are from the antitrust division, Christopher Carlberg, Thomas Green, Parody Javendel, Jacqueline Lem, Howard Parker, Alexander Shepard, Celestine Rosario Susi, Edward Bernard, Peter Woodward, and Linda Van Stavern. Receiving the award but not present today are Michael Condon, Christopher Fueling, Kelsey Lynette, Andrew Mass, and Katrina Rouse. Ladies and gentlemen, the team. Our next recipients successfully prosecuted a significant denaturalization case that revoked the United States citizenship of a convicted war criminal, Adine Jekko. Jekko concealed his military service with the Army of the Republic of Bosnia and his participation in the Trusina massacre. This prosecution sends a strong message that war criminals are not entitled to a safe haven in the United States. Today we honor from the Civil Division, Timothy Belsan, Stephen Platt, Aram Gavor, and from the United States Attorney's Office for the District of Columbia, Wynn Kelly. Our next team is recognized for its outstanding work to dismantle a brutal transnational sex trafficking enterprise that had operated for more than a decade. From the Civil Rights Division, Benjamin Hawk. From the U.S. Attorney's Office, Eastern District of New York, Maggie Lee and Taryn Merkel. And from Immigration and Customs Enforcement, Keith Kolovich, Christopher Davies, Elvin Hernandez, Thomas Kirwan, David Rukowski, Benny Tirado, and Dubash Tinaz. Receiving the award but not present today are Thomas Countermine and Melissa Milam. Ladies and gentlemen, the team.
Our next recipient provided critical litigation and counseling support for the administration's efforts to reconsider the Clean Water Rule, a complex and important rule that defined the scope of water subject to regulation under the Clean Water Act. Today we honor from the Environment and Natural Resources Division, Martha Mann. Our next award is presented to a group who successfully investigated and disrupted some of the most significant and damaging cyber attacks in history, attacks that were attributed to North Korean hackers. The recipients are from the United States Attorney's Office for Central California, Anil Antoni, Stephanie Christensen, and Anthony Lewis. And from the Federal Bureau of, of Investigation, Ian Walker, Chad Bandu, Nathan Shields, Ankit Patel, Philippe Prohorov, Tyrone Summers, Justin Valisi, Julian Paul, and Amanda Knudsen. From the National Security Division, Scott Claffey. And from the Air Force Office of Special Investigations, Joseph Coyne. Receiving the award but not present is David Aaron. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the team. Our next group is recognized for their outstanding multi-year investigation that uncovered significant financial crimes at the French multinational bank, Societe Generale. The recipients from the U.S. Attorney's Office for Eastern District of New York are James McDonald and David Pitluck. From the Criminal Division, Timothy Dury, Dennis Keene, Gerald Moody, and Gary Winters. From the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Jeffrey Grove, Kristen Schill, Patrick Boone, Jamie Dvorsky, Jeffrey Weeks, and Kyle Dornboss. And from the Internal Revenue Service, Eve Hunziker. Receiving the award but not present are Matthew Amatruda and Carol Sipperly. Ladies and gentlemen, our team.
Our next group is honored for its exceptional work to prosecute the administrators of scan for You, an online service that helped computer hackers determine whether computer viruses and other malicious software they created would be detected by antivirus software that we all run. So we appreciate this group. The recipients are from the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Eastern District of New York, Kellen Dwyer, Laura Fong, and Lorraine McNeil. From the Criminal Division, Colette Ford. And from the FBI, Richard Hopenauer, Hadley Etienne, Andrew Kachi, Gerald Kim, Mansoor Aladinov, Anissa Bufarish, Alan Viskotsky, Antonio Santiago, and Eric Wito. Receiving the award but not present are Ryan Dickey and Alden Pelker. And receiving the award but not present are Ryan Dickey and Alden Pelker. And ladies and gentlemen, the team. As our U.S. attorneys from EDVA, Eastern Virginia, just alerted me, our AUSAs in that group were from Eastern Virginia. So thank you, Zach. The next recipients conducted the largest gang takedown in the history of New York City. The team investigated, charged, and prosecuted 120 defendants from two violent street gangs that terrorized the North Bronx. The recipients are from the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York, Jessica Feinstein, Rachel Maiman, Allison Nichols, and Drew Skinner. From the United States Attorney's Office, the District of Hawaii, Micah Smith. From the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, Dean Canigliero. From the Drug Enforcement Administration, Bruce Holm and Moises Walters. From the Department of Homeland Security, Todd Kowalski and Paul Pasuko. And from the New York City Police Department, Paul Jesselson, John Urena, and Paul O'Connor. And receiving the award but not present are Darcy Brady and Hagen Scutton. Ladies and gentlemen, our team. Our final Distinguished Service Award today recognizes a team that investigated, prosecuted, and dismantled the leadership and membership of the MS-13 gang in Massachusetts. The recipients are from the United States Attorney's Office, District of Massachusetts, Kelly Lawrence, Glenn McKinley, Kunal Pazrisha, Christopher Pohl, Teresa Fahey, Hannah Beller, Michelle Donnelly, 
Robert Duran. From the FBI, Jeffrey Wood and Sarah Mazur. From the United States Marshals Service, Kevin Neal. From Immigrations and Customs, Customs Enforcement, Errol Flynn. From the Massachusetts State Police, Mario Millet and Brian Estevez. And from the Chelsea Police Department, Scott Connolly. Ladies and gentlemen, the team. Our next award category is the Attorney General's Award for Excellence in Law Enforcement, recognizing outstanding professional achievement by law enforcement officers. This year, we are presenting two awards. The first award is presented to a team that investigated a narcotics trafficking and money laundering organization with ties to the Sinaloa and Jalisco New Generation cartels. Today, we are recognizing from the Drug Enforcement Administration Kevin Gillespie, Zachary Savides, and Daniel Sosias. Please congratulate our DEA team. Our second award is presented to the Dallas Project Safe Neighborhood Task Force for its exceptional work to reduce violent crime and make the community safer in Dallas, Texas. Today we are honoring from the U.S. Attorney's Office, Northern District of Texas, P.J. Mitel, from the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, Jennifer Bain, from the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Heather Burton, Amy Luce, and Crystal Offray, and from the Dallas Police Department, Cassie Scheiber, Calvin Scudder, Vincent Lee, Leroy Quigg, Joshua Cooper, Marcus Markulek, and Michael Ruler. From the Dallas City Attorney's Office, we're welcoming Cody Robinson. And from the Dallas County District Attorney's Office, Thomas Adams. Ladies and gentlemen, our team.
The Attorney General's Award for Exceptional Service in Indian Country recognizes extraordinary work by Department of Justice employees to fight crime in Indian Country. This year we present two awards. Thank you, Claire. The first award is presented to a task force for its outstanding work to reduce drug trafficking on the Tohono O'odham Nation Reservation. The recipients are from the U.S. Attorney's Office for the District of Arizona, Ryan Dijo, Sarah Houston, Susanna Martinez, Adam Rossi, and Heather Sechrist. From the Drug Enforcement Administration, Jeffrey Garza. From Immigration and Customs Enforcement, Jeffrey Hempel, Sidney Moore, Brian Patterson, and Eric Lopez. From the Tohono O'odham Nation Police Department, Ray Elkdreamer and Samuel Ortega. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the team. We're going to move from a big group to a single award winner with our second award this afternoon. The second award is presented to an individual for her 21 years of exceptional service in helping Native Americans in Indian country. From the United States Attorney's Office for the District of South Dakota, Marlis Big Eagle. The Attorney General's Award for Excellence in Management recognizes outstanding administrative and managerial achievements which have significantly improved operations, increased productivity, or reduced costs. This year's recipients of the Excellent in Management Award are recognized for their commitment to service to the Department of Justice and all its components employees through the, throughout the 35-day partial government shutdown earlier in 2019. This team provided expert advice to DOJ offices and management on highly technical and complicated administrative policy matters and kept our critical law enforcement and national security operations running during the shutdown. And near and dear to all of us, this is the team that kept us paid and got us paid quickly when the government reopened. So that's, <laughs> this is the team. Ladies and gentlemen, our team from So the team is, the team is Chris Alvarez from the Justice Management Division, also from JMD are Matt Roper, Mark Addix, Dan Lucas, Arthur Gary, Pamela Jadwin, Teresa Toll, Cynthia Wright, Angela Freeman, Nicole Arbuckle, and Larry Tunn. Receiving the award but not present this afternoon are Mary Lamory and Michelle Spencer. Yeah. Oh, I will. I will. Ladies and gentlemen, our, our shutdown and reopening team.
The Attorney General's Award for Excellence in Furthering the Interests of U.S. National Security recognizes a special act of service that has greatly contributed to the protection of U.S. national security. This year, we, we present two awards. Our first award is presented to the team that developed the human intelligence and technical capabilities and legal processes that were necessary to address the challenges posed by ISIS's use of end-to-end -end encryption and mobile applications to communicate. The recipients of the award this year are from the FBI, Brian Goldstein, Cameron Graham, Scott Thrift, Lindsay Machow, Ian Kaufman, Michael Wagner, Albert Kelly, Melissa Plowman, Margaret Hardy, Douglas Olson, Stephanie Roddy, Anish Shukla, Mark Wagner, and John Gibbs. Receiving the award but not present is Melissa Himme. Everyone, our team. Since early 2016, a Russian military intelligence agency, the GRU, has used sophisticated cyber means to attempt to undermine Western institutions and values. The final award in this category is presented to a team at the Department of Justice that has countered the GRU hackers' efforts through sophisticated technical and innovative legal techniques. The recipients are from the National Security Division, Sean Newell and Heather Alpino, from the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Western District of Pennsylvania, Charles Eberly, Sue Song, Susan Eichhorn, from the FBI, D. Lynn Hamill, Chad Knapp, Thomas Bishop, Joshua Hubiak, Jason Stroud, Adam Woods, Amber Lazinski, Patrick Myers, Cheryl Camarados, and Paul Anderson. Ladies and gentlemen, the team. The Attorney General's Equal Employment Opportunity Award recognizes managers and employer, employees who go the extra mile to make significant progress towards the department's EEO objectives. This team is honored for its review of gender equality in the department's law enforcement components. Our recipients are from the Office of the Inspector General, Aaron Lane, Don Ellen Schlosser, Ted Ann, Nicholas Card, 
Andrea Davis, and Princess Wasishun. Ladies and gentlemen, our team from the Office of the Inspector General. The Attorney General's Award for Excellence in Legal Support recognizes outstanding achievements in the field of support to the department's attorneys, support work that is critical to our litigation efforts. The first category recognizes paralegal support and the second, legal assistance by other professionals. The recipient for the award in the paralegal category is recognized for her work with the Zero Tolerance Program to work to prohibit illegal entry into the United States. From the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of California, today we are recognizing Julie McPherson. Julie. Our recipient in the legal support category is honored for her exceptional skill, expertise, and ded dedication to the important mission of the Environment and Natural Resources Division. She's being recognized for her expert work and the support she gives all the employees of ENRD. Today we are honoring Deshonda Young. The Attorney General's Award for Excellence in Administrative Support recognizes outstanding administrative and managerial achievements. This year we are presenting one award in the administrative support category. The recipients made significant contributions to speeding the Executive Office for Immigration Review's immigration judge hiring process. Ladies and gentlemen, this afternoon we're recognizing Kate Sheehy, Vicki Butler, Deborah Mutino, Rhonda Caldwell, Judith Barbie, Vanessa Himsey, Matthew Natalie, Crystal Riley, Kay Twyman, Selena Verbal, Susanna Ortiz Ang, Marcia Lee Sullivan, and Sean Romig. Receiving the award but not present this afternoon is Naomi Giles. Ladies and gentlemen, our team. Okay. 
Our recipient in the secretarial category is recognized for her professionalism, attention to detail, and willingness to take on new roles and responsibilities at the Drug Enforcement Administration. Today from DEA, we are honoring Luann Bordwein. The John Marshall Award is named for the fourth Chief Justice of the United States and recognizes outstanding professional achievement by attorneys at the Department of Justice. This year, eight awards will be, will be presented in seven categories. Our first John Marshall Award for the trial of litigation recognizes a team responsible for defending spurious claims against the United States arising from Hurricane Katrina, which struck New Orleans in August of 2005. Today we are honoring from the Environment and Natural Resources Division, William Shapiro, Joshua Wilson, William Lazarus, and Brian Toth. From the Civil Division, Alisa Klein, and from the Office of the Solicitor General, Ed Needler and Erica Ross. Everyone, welcome our Hurricane Katrina team. Our second award is presented to a group for its outstanding litigation and advocacy in the prosecution of a hate crime involving the destruction of a mosque in Victoria, Texas. From the United States Attorney's Office for the Southern District of T Texas, please welcome Sharad Kondewal and, and Kate Sue, and from the Civil Rights Division, Saeed Modi. Ladies and gentlemen, our honorees. Our John Marshall Award for Participation in Litigation is presented to a team for successfully prosecuting a defendant and four associates for targeting victims with mental disabilities in a scheme to steal disability payments. The recipients are from the United States Attorney's Office for the Eastern District of Pennsylvania, Richard Barrett and Faith Taylor. Our team.
Our next John Marshall Award for Supportive Litigation is presented to a team for its outstanding work reviewing and, and closing over 1,300 outdated antitrust judgments. The recipients are from the Antitrust Division, Dorothy Fountain, Hillary Snyder, Lawrence Riker, Barry Creech, Justin Dempsey, Cameron Gower, Ryan Carr, and Kara Kurtz. Receiving the award but not present are Mark Merva and Mark Niefer. Everyone, our antitrust team. Over the past 15 years, the recipient of the John Marshall Award for Handling of Appeals has been one of the Department of Justice's premier appellate advocates, handling many of our most important and sensitive cases, including national security and foreign affairs cases. Today we are recognizing from the Civil Division, Sharon Swingle. Sharon. The recipients of the John Marshall Award for providing legal advice serve as key legal advisors for federal agencies working on acquiring land to build a border wall. Due to this team's work, the government was able to acquire scores of voluntary acquisitions without litigation and many months ahead of schedule. From the Environment and Natural Resources Division, we are honoring today Andrew Goldfrank and Barry Wiener. Hey guys. The recipients of the John Marshall Award for preparation or handling of legislation led the department's efforts to draft legislation that became law to respond to the growing use of domestic drones. Prior to this team's efforts, federal agencies had no legal means of countering the threats posed by this emerging technology. Today we are recognizing from the Office of the Deputy Attorney General, Brendan Groves. From the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Joseph Mazel. From the National Security Division, Julie Dickerson. And from the Office of Legislative Affairs, Joan Johnson. Everyone, our team.
Our final John Marshall Award is presented for alternate dispute resolution. Our team successfully settled a case to acquire a massive underground, underground salt cavern capable of storing 10 million barrels of crude oil for the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. From the Environment and Natural Resources Division, we're honoring this afternoon Renita Ford, Johanna Franzen, Anthony Gentner, Eugene Hansen, and Reed Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, the ENRD team. Claudia J. Flynn Award for Professional Responsibility recognizes department attorneys who have made significant contributions in the area of professional responsibility and conduct. Today we honor our team for its outstanding work with respect to critical ethical and professional responsibility issues that arose in the single largest healthcare fraud case ever brought against individuals by the Department of Justice. The case involved over $1 billion in false and fraudulent claims to Medicare and Medicaid for services that were never provided. They were not medically necessary and they were, not, and they were procured through the payment of kickbacks. The recipients from this team are from the Criminal Division, Jeremy Sanders, and from the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of Florida, John Shipley. Our team. The Attorney General's Award for Outstanding Service in Freedom of Information Act Administration recognizes exceptional dedication to the implementation of the Act. One award is presented this year. Today we are honoring Melanie Piste, the recently retired Director of the Office of Information Policy. Throughout, throughout Melanie's 35-year career, she was a skilled and respected FOIA expert who made her mark helping the Department of Justice, other agencies, and citizens navigate the FOIA process and the FOIA, FOIA laws. And I'm unaware of any justice component that didn't benefit from Melanie's help over those 35 years. Everyone, Melanie, to stay. The Attorney General's Award for Fraud Prevention recognizes the highest achievements in the prevention, investigation, and prosecution of fraud and other white-collar crimes. This year's Fraud Prevention Award is presented to a team that convicted the defendants of a fraud and money laundering conspiracy that targeted the elderly and other vulnerable victims known as the Jamaican Lottery Scam. The recipients are from the U.S. Attorney's Office for the District of North Dakota, Nicholas Chase. Jonathan O'Connick, Trina Gihuli, Jacqueline Haig, Lee Johnson, Beth Lang, and Dimple Smith. From the Criminal Division, Layla 
Baba Ava, and Lorinda Ladier. From the FBI, Francis Gasper. From the U.S. Marshals Service, Henry Gaberth. And from the Postal Inspection Service, Brian Horn. Receiving the award but not present this afternoon are Renita Berger and James Thomas. Ladies and gentlemen, the team. The Attorney General's Award for Outstanding Contributions to Community Partnerships for Public Safety recognizes extraordinary contributions which make our communities and neighborhoods safer. This team is honored for its outstanding work to create and implement a novel multifaceted program to address a disturbing increase in drug smuggling by juveniles along the southwest border. Today we are recognizing from the United States Attorney's Office for the Southern District of California, Sherry Hobson and Chastity Urias from the Drug Enforcement Administration, Jessica Solario from Customs and Border Protection, Shailene Thomas from Immigration and Customs Enforcement, Cynthia, Cynthia Estrella and from the San Diego County District Attorney's Office, Mary Loeb and from the San Diego Police Department, Sam Pursala from the South Bay Community Services Organization, Mandy Miskovich, and from San Diego, California, Sandra Nolan, and receiving the award but not present is Cynthia, Cynthia Cipriani. Ladies and gentlemen, our team. Our next award is named in memory of Robert Cubby Dorsey, who worked 24 years on the Justice Management Division's facility staff as a federal wage system employee. Following the 2018 hurricanes Florence and Michael, this year's recipient of the Cubby Dorsey Award volunteered to deploy the two Federal Bureau of Prisons locations. He went down to help get the institutions on generator power in a short amount of time and aided the safety and security of the facilities by getting them power quickly, helping their staffs, and helping keep the inmate and staff population safe at both these facilities. Ladies and gentlemen, William Mosley. The Attorney General's Award for Outstanding Contributions by a New Employee recognizes exceptional performance by an employee with fewer than five years of service at the department. Since joining the Department of Justice, this year's recipient has established himself as one of the most respected legal minds and appellate trial attorneys in the criminal division. Ladies and gentlemen, this afternoon we're recognizing Francesco Valentini.
At this point in the ceremony, I turn the microphone back to our, our principal deputy associate attorney general, Claire, to bring us home with some of the most significant department awards. I do want to mention one more thing, and that is tomorrow, uh, at the Department of Justice, there is a group being recognized for their outstanding work on judicial nominations for the past year, and the Attorney General will recognize this group tomorrow, including Supreme Court nominations, the Kavanaugh nomination, and just so everyone knows, there's maybe not here with us on stage this afternoon, but the Department is going to recognize another group of outstanding employees back at the main Justice Building tomorrow afternoon. And with that, Claire. The Edward H. Levy Award is presented to pay tribute to the memory and achievements of former Attorney, attorney General Levy, whose career as an attorney, a law professor and dean, and public servant exemplified professionalism and integrity. This year's recipient is honored for his distinguished public service career. Steve Bennett, senior law enforcement attache in the criminal division, exemplifies the very best in executive leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to present the Edward H. Levy Award to Steve Bennett. The next two categories of awards recognize significant contributions by law enforcement partners and citizens. The Meritorious Public Service Award is presented this year to a dynamic leader who is responsible for all operational and logistical aspects of the Federal Bureau of Prisons Pharmacy Program, which provides total pharmaceutical care to more than 150,000 inmates in 122 institutions across the nation. Ladies and gentlemen, from the U.S. Public Health Service, we recognize Michael Crockett. The William French Smith Award for Outstanding Contributions to Cooperative Law Enforcement pays tribute to the memory and achievements of Attorney General William French Smith for his efforts in promoting interagency law enforcement cooperation. The recipients of this year's award are local law enforcement partners honored for their collaborative approach to preventing violent crime and improving public service for residents of Newark, New Jersey. The team meets bi-weekly to discuss ongoing investigations, share intelligence, identify potential threats to the safety of the community, and, and to discuss targeting efforts to reduce violent crime. Today we honor, from the Essex County Sheriff's Office, Chris Bozios. From the Essex County Prosecutor's Office, John Marcelli. From the New Jersey State Police, Craig Costello. From the New Jersey State Parole Board, Matthew Testa. And from the Newark Police Department, William, I'm sorry, I'm gonna butcher this, William Mahalaris and Anthony Venancio. The Mary C. Lawton Award recognizes employees who have served at least 20 years in the department and who have demonstrated high standards of excellence and dedication. The award is given only in exceptional circumstances. I am pleased to announce that this year, not only are we awarding the award, we are presenting to two outstanding individuals. The first recipient of the Mary C. Lawton Award has exemplified the highest traditions of the Justice Department for nearly four decades. She has been instrumental in obtaining countless victories in litigation, and she has counseled numerous federal agencies on the many statutory and regulatory issues related to federal personnel law. 
Today we recognize from the Civil Division, Marley Dover. Throughout almost 45 years with the Tax Division's appellate section, the final recipient of the Mary C. Lawton Award has unselfishly dedicated himself to achieving the Division's mission of full, fair, and consistent enforcement of the nation's tax laws. He has continuously advanced the government's goals of promoting voluntary compliance with the law, maintaining public confidence in the integrity of the tax system, and promoting sound development of tax administration and law. Today we recognize from the Tax Division, Gilbert Rothenberg. The Attorney General's Award for Exceptional Heroism recognizes an extraordinary act of courage or voluntary risk of life during the performance of duty. This award has special significance in the department because of the inherent hazards encountered by our law enforcement personnel. It is only through their courage, heroism, and devotion to duty that the department is able to fulfill its law enforcement mission. On November 29, 2018, members of a U.S. Marshal Service District of Arizona Task Force served a warrant to arrest a fugitive wanted for stalking local law enforcement officers. The team located the fugitive at his residence and approached the home. They surrounded the building and began making announcements to the fugitive to come out and surrender to law enforcement. The fugitive failed to comply with orders and shot through a window, striking Deputy U.S. Marshal Chase White under his arm. Multiple task force members immediately rushed to action and quickly evacuated Deputy White to the local medical center, where he ultimately succumbed to his injuries. The fugitive remained barricaded inside the residence, but eventually surrendered and was taken into custody. The actions of Chase White and his team demonstrated extraordinary bravery and a willingness to make the ultimate sacrifice in support of the Marshall Service and Justice Department missions. Ladies and gentlemen, we honor today from the U.S. Marshall Service, Jose Valenzuela, Michael Adams, Nicholas Bain, Kevin Governor, Ricardo Manriquez, Benjamin Peterson, Christopher Schumann, and Stephen Slawiak. From the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, James Small, and from Immigration and Customs Enforcement, Winward Griffin, and Martin Renteria. Accepting the award on behalf of Chase White is his mother, Linda White, and father, Michael Jenkins.
We have now come to our final award. The Attorney General's David Margolis Award for Exceptional Service is the most prestigious recognition bestowed by the department. It is named in honor of formal, former Associate Deputy Attorney General David Margolis, one of the senior most career employees at the Department of Justice, who served in various important roles over the course of 50 years. Mr. Margolis was a consummate public servant who served justice with unmatched devotion and remarkable skill. To generations of justice employees, he was a respected colleague, a trusted advisor, a mentor, and a beloved friend. This award recognizes exceptional service in the spirit of Mr. Margolis. The recipients of this year's award successfully investigated and convicted Joaquin Guzman, also known as El Chapo, one of the most notorious international drug cartel leaders. Guzman was a principal leader of the Sinaloa Cartel, a Mexico-based drug trafficking organization responsible for importing and distributing staggering quantities of narcotics from Central and South America into the United States over a 25-year period. The 12-week trial included testimony from dozens of witnesses and the seizure of weapons, over 130,000 kilograms of cocaine and heroin, and other items detailing the drug trafficking activity of Guzman and his co-conspirators. Guzman was ultimately sentenced to a life term of imprisonment plus 30 years to run consecutive to the life sentence. He was also ordered to pay $12.6 billion in forfeiture. Ladies and gentlemen, this afternoon we honor, from the criminal division, Amanda Liscom, Anthony Nardozzi, Brett Reynolds, An Ancaya Jimenez, sorry, um, Angela Ancaya Jimenez, and Michael Lang. From the Drug Enforcement Administration, Victor Vasquez and Peter Lopresti. From the United States Attorney's Office for the Southern District of Florida, Adam Fells and Lynn Kirkpatrick. From the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Eastern District of New York, Andrea Goldberg, Hiral Mehta, Patricia Natopoulos, Gina Parvo Parvolovecchio, Michael Rabati, Huda M. Boucher, Melissa Bennett, and Eileen Rosado. From the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Griselle Sass and Eric McGuire. And from Immigration and Customs Enforcement, John Zapponi and Damian Mazzaferro. Please join me in honoring the team. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been an honor to help present these well-deserved awards to department employees and individuals from other agencies and the community who have worked so hard to promote the department's mission. On behalf of Attorney General Barr, Deputy Attorney General Rosen, and the entire department, I thank you for being here today to help honor these extraordinary individuals. This concludes today's ceremony. Please join us for a small reception in the lobby of Constitution Hall. And please join me in one final round of applause for our recipients. Thank you.